This is the first lesson in a five-part series on creating the perfect button in After Effects. In this first video, I'll teach you how to create a rounded box with percentage-based rounding corners. This is the first step in creating our button. If you just want a drag and drop solution, skip to the end for a handy preset that you can download and use immediately. For those that want to learn, you can follow along with this video. Create a brand new shape layer and toggle open Rectangle 1, Rectangle Path 1, and go to Size. Decreasing the size will change the size of our box. We can unlink these properties to have an asymmetrical box. I'll turn on these guides for the tutorial, which will simply display our width, height, and roundness values on the canvas. It'll help visualize what's going on. So in our timeline, we have this roundness property, and we can round the corners of our box. However, if we make our box very small, let's say 100 pixels wide, and we increase our roundness so we have rounded corners, you can see that when we increase the size, our box is no longer that pillow shape, and our corners are no longer as rounded as they were. This poses a problem for something like a button that has to resize to fit the text within it. So why is this? Well, the roundness property of shape layers is pixel-based. So a roundness value of 17 is rounding the corners by 17 pixels. With a smaller rectangle, 17 pixels can look like the maximum roundness, but at a larger size, a 17 pixel roundness will barely have an effect. Instead, we can calculate rounded corners as a percentage. That way, no matter how our box scales, the corners will change proportionally to the full size. So how do we convert this roundness property from pixels to percentage? I'll make this a 100 by 100 square to make the math easy. If I set this to 50, you can see that our corners are 100% rounded and we've created a circle. As I increase this value, they're not going to round anymore. Now if I go down, even to 49, you can see that this is starting to get more angular. And if we go to zero, of course we have zero rounding and it's back to the square. Let's see what happens with a rectangle. Increasing past 50 doesn't do anything. The smallest edge is still only 100 pixels high, so the maximum roundness is still 50. If I increase the height to 200, our maximum roundness is now 100. And if we increase the height to 250, the maximum roundness is 125. So 100% rounded corners is exactly half of the smaller side of our box. With that knowledge, we can dive into expressions. Pick whip size so it inserts into the roundness expression. It says content, rectangle one, rectangle path one, size, bracket zero. The size property is an array, meaning it contains multiple values. Size has two values, it has a width and it has a height. Size 0 is referencing the first value of that array, which is 400. If I change this to a 1, it references the height of 250. Arrays are 0 indexed, meaning that we reference the first value with bracket 0, and then we count upwards for each consecutive value. To demonstrate this, if I change this to a 2, it breaks. Bracket 2 would be a third value in the array, so we'll just use 0 and 1. We'll create two new variables to store our width and height values, and name them x and y. Pick whip the width, which is the first value of the array, to insert it into the x variable. Then pick whip the height, which is the second value, and insert it into the y variable. Now if we output x, it will give us 400. And if we output y, it'll give us 250. Now if we output y divided by 2, our roundness is 125. And that will always be driven by our size property. The issue is, if we change our size value so that the width is smaller than the height, the roundness is still only looking at the height on the y and ignoring the x value. So we need to create a new variable, that gives us the smaller of the two x and y numbers. To do this, I'll create a new variable called max roundness and write math.min and in parentheses x comma y. If we output that, we will always have the smaller of these two numbers. But remember, we need half of the smaller of our two numbers. So just divide by two. Now, how do we convert this to a zero to 100 based range? To remap ranges, we use a function built into After Effects called linear. The way linear works is we take in one property like a slider control, and we define the acceptable minimum and maximum inputs of that control. We then remap those inputs to a new minimum and maximum output. I'll create a new slider, rename it to roundness control, and then in our expression field, create a new variable for the slider and pick whip it to add to our expression. First, we define inputs. So create a variable for min input and max input. Then we define our outputs. So min output, max output. Then at the bottom, we use linear. Linear can take five parameters, so we'll add all five of our variables that we've created, separated by commas. The way that you read this is, as slider goes from the minimum input to the maximum input, remap that range to the minimum output and maximum output. So let's input some actual values so we can see. Define min input as zero, max input as 100, min output as zero, 
and max output should equal max roundness divided by 2. Now as our slider goes from 0 to 100, we can see that our roundness property is going from 0 to our max roundness divided by 2. And if I change the slider to 50, it'll always be 50% roundness. At 25 on the slider, it's 25% rounded, etc. And there we go. Okay, I broke that expression down very simply to teach you each piece that goes into it. However, I'm now going to rewrite this expression so that it does the same thing but all fits on one line. This expression works exactly the same as what we wrote before. I'm just using some fancy JavaScript to make it shorter. So there you go, a one-liner condensed expression that will work perfectly for your rounded corners. I've created a preset for this that you can download in the description. After installing it, go up to your effects and presets, find rounded box, double click it, and that will create the perfect rounded box. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to take this to the next level and have individually rounded corners on this box. See you later.